So, very, very old. You know, it's just a tendency when you get to that age, Mikey. You just like talking. Yeah, absolutely. Well, this should be an interesting matchup. Five man smoke already for bait. Let's see if this pans out to anything. By the way, shout out to Fear. Love you, Fear. He, he knows <laughs> I'm joking around. I mean, he doesn't ever laugh, and he has a stone cold face every single time I make a joke, but he knows I love him. <laughs> I think. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Who knows? Perhaps. Anyway, we do have a video coming up with Dendy, of all people. We're going to ask him, Jonathan, Radiant or Dire? Let's hear what he has to say. I think Radiant give more advantage related to our play style because we are aggressive and we want to destroy it. And obviously Radiant are better for this because Dire is better for farming. And that's how we do it. I lied, Jonathan. We are going to hear what Dendy has to say. And there you go. Yeah, they do prefer Radiant. They have Radiant. They want to be aggressive with it. They, they avoid that early first blood from Lodan, you know, at the, at the least. So we'll see if they can get that aggression going. I think that's one thing that Bait has been a bit slower on, you know, in the early to mid game. That aggression just doesn't really come out. So I'm keen to see if it's something they can correct. They have managed to snag three bounty runes once more on Bait's end. It's going to feel really good once, once again for them to snag that away. And I'm keen to see how much more Dendi can get out of his Primal Beast. He's not matching up against the Tusk. He is up against the Pango. I feel like this is easier for Kits in comparison to the Tusk matchup. You have a little bit more space with yourself. You have more durability with a Shield Crash. You can't quite dodge out Onslaught. I mean, you could with a good Swash, but it's a lot harder in comparison to Snowball. So I feel like Dendi actually has a little bit more play at the same time. Kits has the ability to poke and prod just a tad bit better with a swash at the least here. Yeah, absolutely. I, I'm kind of intrigued by this top lane as well. Like, we heard Fee saying he didn't really appreciate the, the Darkseer pickup. Obviously, it does decently well into the Sven, uh, but as a hero, he wasn't the biggest fan. It, it seems like you are going to be able to apply a lot of pressure here between these two. Like, you've got this double Iron Shell combination. You have the Avalanche toss back with the Iron Shells. It can be quite a painful experience for the side of Five Rat. But what are you thinking about the top? I think they're doing the right thing. I mean, Moose is trying to get the creep wave intercepted by a Balino Zebra, so you're pretty happy about that. And Five Rat, you're giving free farm out to DNM. He's not really being harassed out by the Iron Shells. It takes a couple of levels for Funic to really start to apply pressure with Iron Shells. Well, level two Iron Shells, pretty much that early spike at level three that you're looking for. And they sniped a pretty good courier. Those were two mangoes that Moose had. So. It might be stalled out just enough where he might not have spells. And again, he's stuck at level 1 anyway with no spells. So not the biggest loss in the world. But as long as DNM finds farm here, you're happy. And Albino Zebra is just making it so hard for them to get these pulls consistently that DNM should be able to just get that build up he wants and eventually switch to that jungle. Now, Stormin and bot lane does end up going down. Very nice pick up there from Lodine. Was the arrow landing perfectly and just nothing they could do to get Stominant out of there. Speed obviously can't really help out in the Beastmaster. Not much he could have uh, could have really got, got him done. Top lane, a lot of aggression happening here. Can the Iron Shells proving to be very, very painful for both Albino Zebra and DNM. Kind of in a similar scenario, you don't really have the, the greatest way of kind of bursting down the, the said creep with the Iron Shell. It can be uh, very annoying indeed here in... I think it only gets more painful. This is only level one Iron Shell for now. Those levels go up on Funic. This lane could become very, very dangerous here for DNM and Albino. Yeah, but it's still not stopping DNM from farming. It's still in a relatively healthy position. Top of the CS board. You're not seeing the same impact yet from Funic. Uh, only three CS under his name. And you've got Tiny with you. So Moose is soaking a lot more EXP as well, as he wants to get his own level spikes. So you're, you're not really allowed to just scale into that level 3, level 4 spike where Dark Tears starts to feel a lot better, at least as quickly as you'd want to. And I think that's still pretty damn good for 5 rat 4 staff. We'll see if they have the space to get stacks. I do like that. There are some good wards coming out from bait to kind of watch the jungle entrances for any moves on early stacking by the supports for the Sven. And Sven is a hero that really enjoys the jungle buildup. So again, if they manage to intercept that in bait's end, you're pretty happy. You've got good roamers to kind of get that done. Moose on the Tiny and Marana rotations out from Lodine can get that done really quick. So far, we are seeing a better lane here for Dendi as well on mid. Top of the CS as well. 
He's managed to ride that lane up against Kits much better than the Tusk matchup last time. So he should be able to hit those early power beats as well. And again, the one thing that we didn't see early on from Bait and from Dendi for the Primal Beast was playing around with early Pulverize. Hopefully this time around we'll see that correction with how aggressive their supports can be. On mid lane, a lot of damage being dealt here, but Dendi probably not going to land the Onslaught, so Kits is going to be just fine to walk his way out. Top lane, a bit more aggression coming out, our Bino. Copying so much damage from this Iron Shell. Moo's just going to chase him down, and there's really no way out. Sure, oh, wait a minute. Tree plant Ooh. does actually outrun them. Moo's still chasing, but eventually, no, he gets the toss up. The movement slow was kind of nice there for a moment with the dual breath, but ultimately won't mean enough here against Moo's. Yeah. Just uh, a little bit too much there, and they did try for a cheeky tree plant as well, I believe. Not quite enough to block that pat as well. And they have managed to put a dent in that lane. They're starting to find more. They've got the level 2 Iron Shell, much more painful. Movement speed of Jakiro, not that high at all. Easy to run down. Early rotation. Dendi coming into that bot lane at that five, level 5 mark. Speed dropping very low and it does pay off. Really wanted to make sure that speed does not take off on the Beastmaster. And I suppose it is a very nice rotation. And that's what we wanted to see from Bait. Remember, in the past few games they've played, early aggression isn't something the lineup has been seeing. But as we heard from Dendi in the interview, you know, they're, they've got Radiant. They love playing aggressive from Radiant. It is showing in this match why they do love that. And now, you know, Dendi's very close to his six. He's going to have the pulverize. He has given space to kids to also work into his own levels up not too far off from his own level six and without rolling thunder it's gonna be an interesting back and forth as to who can get the jump on who earlier here yeah pulverize mid lane so they are trying to make Ooh. a move here onto kids arrow's gonna land as well and they find him great rotation here from our marana as well uh. low dine getting aggressive but now dendy Dropping rather low, will go down as well. Low time doesn't have any leave charges, so he also gets caught. He'll try to walk the old-fashioned way, but it is not going to be enough. So they find the Pango trade, but they give up two for that. Yeah, and that's, again, aggression coming out from bait that we needed to see on mid, but good punishment out from 5-rat 4-staff. Still cost him. You're not happy about losing kits before any of those kills come out. But it is some much-needed EXP for these supports. They get a lot of damage with every level early on, leading into that level six, and they still have to roll here. Dendi, go for the trample, rolling thunder. Bit of a, a pump fake there from Kits, won't go too far with it. Top lane, bit of a chase onto DNM. Funny trying his best to, to keep up with the Sven. Is that a mana though, so it doesn't have another iron shot to throw out quite yet, but there you go. It's got one now. DNM props to him. He has still found a hell of a lot of farm considering the lane. You wouldn't think it's it's going to be this even, but DNM keeping up pretty much neck and neck with the Ursa. Yeah, he's managed to do a really good job, and I think that's mildly worrying for the Ursa, uh, just because Sven farms a lot faster with that great cleave. Ursa's going to need battle fury to kind of keep up with that pace. Still, Dandy's trying to be aggressive and uh, stomach in, but not really able to find the angle. They had a smoke up on Lodine there as well. Back to that point, I mean, this is just one of the better starts for his Ven. And again, if you consider the matchup up against Ursa, the investment in the, into Battle Fury to match what the NM will be capable of doing with just Echo Saber or Mask of Madness, it, it's quite a fair bit of time. That's going to lead to an earlier power spike for DNM, where he might have, say, Blink BKB with a Mask of Madness. That's the point where you can just jump in, take control, and play around with your control. Play around with your team fight. You have AoE control and bushwhack, not the most reliable, but Speed. still pretty strong. Caught out again, down to the spot lane, will drop. Dendi again rotating down to the bot. And they are at least trying to delay the Helm of the Overlord timing, I suppose. He's already got the Dominator though, so he's still just fine. Meanwhile, mid lane, they are going to find moves with this Rolling Thunder. So the Tiny will drop to boot. One for one, still in the favor of bait, considering they do find a pause three for a pause four. And I, I do think it's all about making sure the Beastmaster timings are as slow as humanly possible. Yeah, they've done a really good job in stalling out speed. He does have the Helm of the Dominator up anyway, so I don't think he minds too much, but this will affect the Overlord timing and just how much he can control that lane. They've left speed alone for the most part in this lane as well. They have been much more busy across the map on 5-Rat 4-Staffs, and one thing with Bait's movement is that they've really made sure to 
kind of in ensure that they keep checking that triangle. They've been dipping in and out of that area. Dendi's been running up there. There haven't been any stacks made for DNM. So even with this early timing onto the Echo Saber and just having that kit advantage over the Ursa in terms of clearing out, he doesn't have quite as many camps to flash for him in. Then he got stunned though. Yeah, he did get stunned. Huh. He got stunned by the creep. Yeah. Oh, the ogre smash. He's going to be okay. He'll onslaught out. That yeah. ogre smash, man, it's like mental damage. It's emotional damage. Like, you get hit by that, it just feels so bad. It really does. And uh, a really unfortunate timing to just walk up there. Still, he gets away. You know, not the biggest deal in the world. Just goes back to farming. A bit of smoke play out from Five Rat, though. Ping's coming out down yeah. south. Big pick off here if they can catch the spin. Stormhammer will be out. Vacuum back. Toss up. DNM's gone. Great pick off here for bait. Bottom. I mean, Lodine's around, but... Or rather, Lodine's around, but... Radiant just setting up. He does need a TP to come in to really be able to secure some sort of a kill. He will move in for the helm of the Dominated Creep, and... That might just be enough to slow down the push attempt from speed. Yeah, they got a smoke out there from Kits uh, with a couple of the supports earlier. That was broken up by the gank on DNM. They don't manage to find stone bank, so they should just be able to commit for this push now. Lodan will try to stall it. Has another arrow to take care of a creep if he wants to. Doesn't find the large creep though, and that might put him at risk. He does have leap charges though, at least. That was his last one. He's going to be all right to back off. You know, not in range for a storm hammer. Just training the uh, the top and bot T1. Of course, Bait will find their own T1 up at that top lane. So, pretty even kind of trades across the map right now. Bait also holding a 2k net worth advantage. And I mean, you've already talked about this, but they have been much better in this early game with that aggression. See if they can keep it up, though. I mean, their Ursa is top of the net worth board right now, only followed by Dendi on that Primal Beast. Of course, Stonebank going for a very early Battle Fury timing. Very effective against heroes like that Beastmaster. Overall, just very good on the Ursa, just being able to escalate that farm. Should have a decent timing on it. He's very close now. Yeah, it's a bit worrying for Five Rat Four Staff. Having this Ursa already out farm your Sven, not having the stacks built up for DNM. He does have at least a double stack on the Ancients, but it's not as much as you'd want for this hero to really hit its stride. So Bait's done a great job of just forcing all this attention away from the supports, not allowing that build-up. Five Rat Force Staff trying to shove in mid. They've got the tools available to fight in, but Moonlight Shadow is up. Bait can kind of find an angle here. They're going to try and do. Arrow going to land on the helm of the Dominator Creep once again. Very nice little angle there from Lodine. Bait still moving forward. Moose has nothing to break the gap. Nothing like a blink up yet. So five right, they will be able to avoid the smoke attempt, or rather the moonlight shadow gank attempt that was incoming. Dendi fighting over that power rune, and it will be a nice little region there for Kits. The ice path making sure he can't onslaught forward. But Beta, again, considering the state of the game, as long as Stonebank continues his farm, I mean, he's got the Battle Fury up at 12 minutes, so he's having a really nice time. I, it doesn't feel like they need to get aggressive. It, it feels like they can afford to just allow Snowback to hit creeps, play a bit more passively, and chances are he'll be able to just overtake the Sven throughout this game constantly. Yeah, and just allow that build up. You're also kind of giving space out for everyone else to get their farm as well. Moose working onto that blink. It should have decent timing on it on the pause for Tiny. Dendi's BKB a little bit more, a little bit further away from the recipe, but Two parts down already, not much further from that. And you'll also, you've also got more durability coming in on Funic with a full mech up and running. So you're, you're aligning all your tools together, not just your Ursa. You have a lot coming out on your mid, on your supports, on your offlane. Although, Stomin. Stomin. Gonna set up perfectly. Lodine will drop on the Mirana. Dendi, he will onslaught out. He'll be okay. Three-man smoke here from Five Rat Four Staff. I mean, they do know where Dendi went, so they could opt to try and go through that Radiant Jungle if they wish. Instead, they're waiting for someone to show up in that mid lane. Bait, however, they two-man smoke as well. Moose and Dendi to move with each other. Albino Zebra baiting, it seems, on this Chikiro in that mid lane, but there's plenty of heroes around from Bait to, to force a pretty big team fight. 
wrap around from bait now. They'll run right into speed very soon. Onslaught will connect from Dendi, but the TP rotations are incoming. There's your rolling thunder. Raw committed as well. Speed will survive. Stoddermann also joining in, but Dendi's just so darn tanky. Another stun landing. There's your sharpshooter, but where's the damage output? Here comes DNM. That's what you needed. They'll take Dendi down, and it seems like bait in the end weren't ready for a big team fight. Yeah, it's a, it's a bit surprising. They're, the entire team didn't quite respond in. Moose didn't follow oh, through as much, although. DNM, he chose to farm in a very dangerous position. He'll try to use the pig stick. The arrow will be avoided. Albino Zebra around the corner as well, and somehow DNM gets away with his life intact. Yeah, managed to dodge out that arrow, and does allow him to bail out in the nick of time. Really good double hero Stormhammer there as well. Catching them as they were about to Delta split apart. And they managed to stall it. It evens out the game a little bit more. 6-5, to 1k lead for bait. Um, they are still set to meet these key item timings, but they are recovering on 5-rat 4-staff quite nicely. And even without the stacks for DNM, he does have the disassembly on the Echo Saber into BKB play left. Ooh, that, that spell immunity will do a lot, knocking away Dendi's impact, knocking away Moo's impact, even the damage from Phonic kind of falls flat at that point. So you can be really strong. Did you manage to scan to find uh, at least Kits walking around there, but not really able to punish? And speaking of Kits, he will have his Diffusal flying in now as well. So more damage output from him. Really obnoxious up against something like the Darkseer who wants to spam his spells. And just a little bit more control coming out with that inhibit. Top lane. Stormin. Well, there's Stormin and an albino zebra hanging around. Moose. They get spotted here. Oh, whoa, that was an interesting TP to make. Does get caught out. We'll go down eventually. Meanwhile, mid, however, Stonebank's being chased out. Kids, not going to go all the way. Rangers pop, that's going to be enough for uh, for Stonebank to get out. Five Rat cannot pursue any further. Yeah, they're getting a lot of value out from Funix Mech. He's been stalling out these fights quite nicely. The mid does hold for a little bit, but it does fall eventually to Speed's creep. So you still find the objective you want on Five Rat. You did have a kill opportunity, but as long as the objectives fall, it does provide openings. Ooh, kids. Playing on the edge there. I told you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, some silly, silly voice lines. Very, very silly. You love to see it though. So, 1k advantage. 7 to 5 here for bait. They, they're still in the advantage, but it, it does feel like the gap is closing. Like, DNM's been doing a real damn good job on this Sven of keeping up, considering how early the Battle Fury timing was. Mind you, it is a Sven who basically has a free Battle Fury inbuilt into the hero, but. You get my point, John. Yeah, yeah. Do you remember the days when you would build Battle Fury, Sven? No. <laughs> I never did that. I've, I've seen it a couple times before. I bet you have, In our John. early days of Dota. Okay. Dota 1, truly de degenerate. See, here's the thing. Right? Hold that. I'm, I'm about to show off, Jonathan, but one moment. Moose is going to maybe get caught out here because Dominant. No, he won't throw a bushwhack out. Can I just say... No. I... All right. <laughs> DNF... <laughs> Lodine, you're going to get caught out on the Marana. We'll go down. Say what you were going to say, Mike. I want to know this wisdom of yours. Back in the day, Jonathan, when I played, uh, when I started playing Dota, I was an Ursa fan. Uh -huh. And I always wondered why Ursa couldn't build Battle Fury. Because people always said you uh, can't speak affect... Up. Speaking of the Ursa, I suppose this might be why John Stoming's been caught out. Enrage is there. It won't matter. You know what, John? I might just keep my point to myself. <laughs> uh, something, something, Ursa Battle Fury, Dota 1 Day, something, something. I'm saying something. I was a genius, Jonathan. If you say so, Mike. You know, I, I mean, it's working now. So there you go. There were a couple of changes to kind of enable that, but it is what it is. Smoke out from bait, though. Trying to compensate for that BKB on Dendi here. Yeah, here we go. Dendi, pretty good on onslaught opportunity right into that Roshan pit and the arrow going to land perfectly on DNM. Ice Path going to buy a bit of time, but it won't matter. He is going to drop. It's a great team fight for bait. Dendi right in with the pulverize. Fire Rat forced up, getting annihilated, and Roshan is so darn low. Perfect opportunity now for bait to take back this game. His onslaught will go right through Albino Zebra as well. Tips up for Dendi. A happy bait side.
and surely Roshan for this Radiant team. Yeah, nice and quick coming out for Stoneback. Big Rosh to take, as you would really want in the Ursa anyway. Maybe a few mistakes for 5 Rat 4 Staff. I think the big one was that speed was right next to Dendi when he had the opportunity to roar. He was just constantly stunned by the Pulverize. He couldn't try to get that save onto Kits. They didn't have Rolling Thunder quite up, and they just finished that gank on Stonebank. So the punishment was on point from Bait. They, they understood the play coming out. They had good vision down there as well. And 5 Rat just a bit confident. Yeah. Stominant going to get caught out bot lane. I'll tell you what, and you were right. That Pulverize did keep cancelling that, that animation for the roar. Almost looked like what it looks like when I'm arguing with the wife, just trying to get a point through. <laughs> Are you saying the missus is a primal beast? Jonathan! What a thing to you say! You know what, John? I can't say yes to that. <laughs> she might be watching. I can't say yes to that. <laughs> Hello, Mrs. LaPhoenix. You've heard what Mike has said. <laughs> oh, goodness me. Oh, I love putting words in your mouth, Mike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, she does too. <laughs> she does too. Pulverized. <laughs> anyway, 5k advantage, Bait. Will and truly in the lead. Aegis up here for the Ursa. Happy days right now. Their game to throw here is... It just seems like everything's gone according to plan. What would you like to see used? Uh, what would you like to see happen with this Aegis gen? Where should bait go? I'm, I don't mind if they just farm a little bit more. Honestly, it's not too bad. They could try to take at least one tier two. Any of the side lanes. Top is the one that's open. It's probably the easiest one to go for. They could actually just play really aggressive off the back of this, but it does provide openings for 5-rat. Especially as they build into this blink for Kits, it's still a ways off. But having that angle in to just constantly stun Stone back first is huge. Oh, yeah. You don't want to lose that Aegis like Oh, that's a great bushwhack. Stominant may still go down, but never mind. Great toss avalanche. Oh, Stone Ooh. Bank! He's going to turn around off the back of Moose, but it's not going to matter. He's still in dire straits. Aegis down. Dendi going to try and punish, does find speed with the Onslaught. We'll go right into the Pulverize and that should be a second. In fact, make that a third. Albino Zebra going to drop to boot. Moose and the Tiny really saved the day there. Yeah, they, they managed to make that work. Giga Chad Dendi dropped again. <laughs> I think if you're 5 rat 4 staff, that's not the worst. Uh, although this might get bad. d and Right, he's got the BKB, he's going to rush on to Moose. Moose has the surge away thanks to Funic. And now the BKB will wear off, so Dendi, he might just move right back in. A nice bushwhack, but a counter vacuum being committed by Funic. And it seems like Bait, think better of it, won't keep going. You don't want to fight too deep into that tier 2 tower, not quite yet. Though I say that, Moonlight Shadow has been committed, low dive, looking for an angle. Maybe they can make their way into that die triangle. Oh, Kitsy gets caught out of the Pango. Arrow's not going to connect, though. He'll go into the roll-up. He doesn't have the Rolling Thunder, but he'll swashbuckle away, and somehow... No, he Ooh. won't survive. Stowbank gets in there just the nick of time to take him out. So, Bane, game number two, they're really feeling it. They are. They are. They've been playing really well. Five Rat 4 staff have been a little bit jumpy. We've had a slower lane for speed. They've not been able to get as much push out from this Beastmaster as I think they'd want to. And DNM's farm has been impacted. I think this is what a lot of the teams who did play against Five Rat 4 staff, or at least the one other team that played against them, didn't quite do is control DNM's farm now. Bought out is the Beastmaster speed. Getting pulverized there by Dendi. Moo's looking for a little bit more. Look for Stominant. Are we not going to find him? Instead, mid lane, Albino Zebra. Being chased down by Dendi, but yeah, I say he's okay. Problem is, Moose is always on target with these Avalanche Toss combinations. And that's going to be another kill for the side of bait. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're just finding the big ones. Every time they manage to jump speed first, even if you use the Pulverize on him, it's massive. You take away that one big BKB piercing disable you have. Although, oh. Stone Bank? Oh boy, Stone Bank. In a game like this, you can't afford those mistakes. You, no. You, you can't. Biggest target on the team to find. That's the blink of DNM coming out. Oh. Kids, gonna move in. They know they can capitalize here, John. There's no Ursa. There's no Ursa up. Moose has been caught. He might just drop on the tiny. It's one of those things, like you're so far ahead of net worth. This is when you want to remain grouped up and keep Stominant? the pressure going. How even Ooh. Stominant finds a kill. Yeah. 
They, this is how it starts. It's... I mean, it, it's rocky. You know, this could be a downward slope, but so far, not yet. They still maintain a good lead. It's an opportunity for 5-rat 4-step, but overall, Bait still has, you know, pretty good control on the map. May, might want to wait for the next Roshan now and get that over for Stone Bank for him to really start to pressure the advantage once more onto an objective. Get that, uh, get that secondary life, that security to go into the high ground or another tier 2 for 5-rat 4-staff. I, I think it's down to just a couple of things. It does feel like speed has to be further back, and it need, it feels like he needs something like the blink so he can come in and use the roar at opportune times. And of course, that leads us back into this discussion on esportsbets.io. The betting odds here, of course, were 1.56 to 2.35 between these two teams in the favor, I believe, of 5 Rat 4 stuff, and yes, it was. Bait Ooh. kind of proved them wrong for just a moment, but 5 Rat, they might fight back as, well, Speed, he does get caught once again. Dendi seems to love going after this Beastmaster. Speed just hasn't had a game. Oh, really great use of that smoke and the moonlight. He did pop his BKB though. So 5 Rat just regroup and retreat at this point. They have a window to re-engage. And the respawn of Speed isn't actually that long at this point in the game, just half a minute. So you have a nice window to counter fight on 5 Rat. We'll see, they, they don't really manage to find anything else, although Kits and Stominin are still hanging around here. See what they can get done. Like, it just seems like they want to creep skip if they can. Keep applying the pressure down through this bot lane so they can never push into that Radiant's tier 2 mid tower. They've done a decent job of it. Like, Bait have constantly have had to react to this. And they might just have to do it again. So all their lanes are being pushed out. The only one lane that's going through is the mid lane. And that's because they're there. Speed. He might get caught in this triangle again if he's not too careful. DNM this time is around though. In fact, all of 5 Rat 4 staff are around to try and force the defense out of this tier 2. And that they will. Instead, bait. They'll go back toward that dire outpost and take that instead. Yep. Set themselves up for the Roche. We'll see that timer in about half a minute. They do have Pulverize ready, and you know, the patience has paid off. BKB is back for Dendi. So you can just blink in, BKB Pulverize onto Speed once more. Nothing to stop that. Let's see if Speed will kind of get too far. Oh, Bino, he just gets shredded. In they go. Vacuum was there. Funnick being targeted by DNM. He's surviving for now, but not for long. There goes your Darkseid. One for one. In fact, now they've got Stone Bank. Oh my god. Not the Ursa. The damage. Not the Ursa again. Oh boy, Moose goes down as well, it's all falling apart, Lodine, he's gonna try to run, but the Diffusal Blade is there from Kits, do they have a stun? It doesn't seem like they do, but it won't matter. Three for two trade, but the only heroes to go down on 5-Rat were two supports. Yeah, that's a worthwhile trade for 5-Rat, and you can see the difference that happens when you don't immediately lose speed. He can isolate the Ursa, he can punish Stone Bank when he does jump in, and Dendi has been key in finding these fights for bait. He has been finding the big target he needs in speed. And this time around, it just doesn't connect. Five Rat, find the punishment. You are still 5k ahead on bait, but look at the farm distribution. DNM is right Aww. on Stone Bank's tail. It's kits and speed that are falling behind, but with a spin this fat, it's just so hard. You saw it in the replay as well. Like, in fact, hold that thought, because we are having a bit of a fight going out. Albino Zebra gonna die. But in the replay, you just saw it. Like, Speed was very patient with the roar mm. on that Beastmaster. Just waiting for Stonebank to show, and BKB or not, he just gets caught out, and it's just so simple for the Sven to take him down with all the damage he does have through that God Strength. Very, very tough for bait in those scenarios. It's just one of those things. This is why Dendi keeps focusing on Speed every single time, is you've got to get rid of this beast Beastmaster. Otherwise, the Ursa just doesn't have a game. Yeah, it's really important. Dendi is really key to all of these fights. And, you know, going back to the damage output of DNM, that's him with just a Crystalis. Once he has that full Daedalus up, ah, it's going to take way less wipes to kill off Stone Bank. Still, Roche control is in Bait's favor, and Stone Bank will go straight into it. Second Roche with a shard. It's a nice freebie to give over here on the side of 5 Rat 4 Staff. It does feel like they need to contest, but they don't have vision in that area. No, they certainly don't. So Bait, they will kind of get away with murder here against Roshan. 
Hawk will kind of give the information over, but it's all too late. They'll pop a four-man smoke, and they might still try to fight, but it's going to be into the ages for Stonebank. We'll see what they can do. They can catch bait off guard. Could still be a decent team fight for them. Hoping someone shows in the mid lane, and Dendi is around the corner. Kids will show, just trying to bait Dendi in. Now Dendi shows this could not be a worse moment here for the Primal Beast if he does get caught out. DNA. No, that's a quick blink. That's a real quick blink. Dendi knew something was wrong. And he does get out. Yeah, just not, not close enough of a blink for DNM to get an instant storm hammer off. There is maybe a little bit of a window, but doesn't quite connect. Real quick reaction time. And now it's bait to smoke. With pressure on the top tier one, someone's got, top tier three, someone's got to respond. They might be able to ambush nicely here. If not, they take a tower. Yeah, tier three tower. Not gonna last too long here. Stonebank, he'll take care of it just fine. Daedalus picked up by DNM, but that leaves him without buyback gold. Very, very risky for this defense. It doesn't feel like he was really lacking damage. See if this one pays off for him. Bit of a bold move. The Ursa. A lot of damage being dealt to Stonebank, but not going to lead to a kill yet. Still moves. He does make the jump in with a nice toss back onto Albino Zebra. Kids is there with the Rolling Thunder. It's a great Rolling Thunder. In fact, they've got the Ursa in a very awkward position. The Enrage oh. wears off and the Aegis is gone. But they're still not as five. Five Rat do that as three. Yeah. DNM's not there. Speed's not there. They take away the Aegis with just a support. Two supports plus kits. And that that is massive. They're impressing me with these guys, I'll tell you. They are so coordinated in how they play with each other. They're being efficient across the map as well. They're ensuring DNM will only come in with buyback. They're making sure they've got their bases covered. It's risky. And but it works. I thought it was a bit awkward when they they were going on to Stone Bank. Ice Path missed on the high ground. Didn't matter. They found an angle back in anyway. Here we go again. Five rat. Knowing the Aegis is down, they want to try and make a move. With that Daedalus up on DNM, people are absolutely going to melt. This is not going to be very fun if you get caught by this fet. In we go. Hawk does get taken down by the arrow. DNM moves in. He sees the Marana. That's a nice little kill onto low time. He'll tank the gank. Problem is, Moose is forcing out the top lane, so it might force a defense out from five rat. And it does. Stominan, he'll make he'll make sure the top lane does get forced out. And that'll put an end to any kind of fighting that happens here in the mid lane. Yeah, the tower is still really low though. 72 HP. Should just get chipped away by the creep wave, although next wave at least spawns. But only a only a breeze of wind left to kind of knock that down. Five rat. This is the point where you just kind of sit back and let the NM keep building into buyback plus an item. He is going for the AC next. That can kind of help you up against the Ursa in a massive way. Just delay that burst of damage you can get out with Fury Swipes a little bit longer. The Basher being up in kits is really big as well. Just having that disable on the Swash, of course, changes the dynamics of these fights. Now, you're not solely reliant on speed to cancel off something like the Pulverize BKB from Dendi, you've got a backup in kits being able to stop that as well. And another way of controlling Stone Bank on top of that. So multiple ways of just handling the BKB timings here. And 5-Rat, there's still 5k behind, but we're reaching the point in game at 32 minutes in. A 5k lead isn't that massive. It is not. they can do now like do you go for a smoke you know, like Roshan's still a while away now you haven't got that age of subs they're gonna go for the moonlight shadow they're gonna try and make it work through through the moonlight well, fire has done a really good job of just pulling the game back their way that tier 2 mid tower it feels like they've been trying for so long to take that out it's not been that easy though Or invade that dire triangle instead for now, bait. And five rat. Again, just being very cautious with their own positioning at the moment. Selling, staying well, staying well and truly behind. Not allowing any kind of smoke opportunities to happen here from Baden. 
No, oh, again, just a failed attempt here, just not finding any target. I, I, that does favor five rat. Again, just get that build up, working to buy backs and additional items here. Fall Aeon Disc up in Lodine is going to be pretty damn annoying and disruptive. They're going to have ways of just letting the Muran escape, being disruptive to the front line without really being punished for it. And if you look at the graphs here, Mike, 68% uh, win probability for bait. So, still a really good game for them. You know, it, it's still a tough one for Five Rat to kind of take initiative on, just because of how much bait can kind of work these team fights their way, especially if they get a good back wall here. One has to wonder though, once you scale into the 40, 40, 45 minute mark, is that the point where the Sven just becomes really obnoxious, right? Like the Sven, the Pango, even the Beastmaster, say on level 25 talent, when that does come out, the cooldown reduction on Primal Roar is going to be a big concern. The uptime is going to be huge. So Bait, they try to go again. They know they're strong. Go for another smoke play. Just try to get something happening to go onto that high ground. Yeah, they, they've just, they just want to get to that high ground. That's all they want through the top lane, through the mid lane, whatever it is they want to get there. Moonlight Shadow and Smoke popped. Albino, again, going to be on the front lines. Willing to sack himself if it does mean he knows exactly where they are. And now they do. Question is, do Five Rat want to fight? Oh, DNM, he got caught by an arrow. Oh, he got caught by an arrow, but it may not matter. He still gets his BKB off. Stonebank, he's popped that in rage. He needs to get the hell out of there. He gets caught out in a bit of an awkward position. It won't matter though. Everyone out. Five Rat, way too far. And so in the end, it was only Albino Zebra that went down. They did at least force a buyback from the Jakiro. So it's, it's something. It's something, it's not the biggest in the world, but it should be relatively easy to get that die back on him once more. And that does kind of waste the smoke and the moonlight. It doesn't allow them to go into the tier two any closer as of yet. So for five rat four staff, they're hanging on to those objectives. Could have gone a lot worse. I mean, that arrow on DNM was on point, but the follow through didn't quite connect. Quick BKB usage from DNM blocking off that vac into the, power, into the wall as well. Didn't have to worry about that too much. Lose. Oh, Bushwhack misses. May not matter though. They still got the Acorn shot to cancel the blink off. Moose actually not dying. They don't have the damage for him. And now, bait, they are around. Still trying with the swashbuckle. Ice path out as well. Funnix showed up with a vacuum, however. There's your Bushwhack into the Rolling Thunder of Kids. He'll go back after Moose, still trying after the Tiny, and eventually does find him. So Fire Rat, the poking and prodding, eventually it pays off. Yeah, it, it takes a little bit longer, but you did manage to drag Phonic with his own BKB use. So that's down to eight seconds now. And not the biggest deal, it's still pretty long duration. And for Fire Rat, they've been stalling well. Orchid up on DNM, I think Dendi. Blood Torn off. Dendi, he's gonna blink away. That Storm Hammer, not quite landing. With that, I mean, both teams seem so interested in this next Roshan, of course. Problem for either side is it's still ages away. Excuse the pun there, John. That was actually unintended. <laughs> now you know how it feels, Mike. Yeah. Still one and a half minutes away for that next Roshan. Live rat, Albino gets caught, does get bursted down by Stonebank, but now the Enrage was committed, so DNM wants to move in. Pulverize is there, they've got the spin, oh, no. they've got him in a very tight pickle, a very tight scenario. DNM, he's still trying to run. Low time, everyone just chasing the spin, but nobody's able to keep up. DNM is still alive somehow. So Albino Zebra, the only one to drop. And it seems to be the constant scenario, though. I say oh, that. Damn. They have oh. got the pangolin now. Kids. Gonna try and find a way out of this, but another pulverize means they do take him out. Yeah, that's that's a lot bigger. No buyback on kits. It's gonna be really awkward to take these fights. And that was pretty optimistic for DNM to just jump in like that. Probably one of the only times we've seen DNM kind of make a decision like that of jumping in when the conditions weren't quite uh, right for it. Bait, they've got an opportunity now. They could try to pierce through the tier 2 mid if they want to. They're working their way onto the Abyssal for Stonebank. Bank. be flying out. Well, Another great onslaught. He's got DNM. But where's the follow-up? 
No one else around. The nice avalanche oh, DN and finally gets no caught. Pie back. Great pickoff from Dendi. Stick is down. And now without the buyback, they've got a double damage rune. They could go high ground if they really want to. Roshan also going to be up, so plenty of options available for baiters. It sounds like they're going for speed as well. Speed forced the Raw to try and get away. But a pretty dire situation now for the side of 5rat. So it seems like bait should easily be able to move high ground if they wish. But they might just take the safer option. They might just go for Roshan instead first. Yeah, it's a big opportunity for them. It's pretty hard to high ground with Albino Zebra still around. So that's the one blessing for 5rat 4 staff. They've got the wave clear. They've got the macro pyre ready for that defense. Makes it a little bit awkward for bait. Roche, safer play. Does have a refresh shard on hand as well. So that could be massive for someone like Funic. You can get the double wall, double vac going there. And it doesn't take too long for Stonebank to reach into it. Still Kits is back up. No vision still on 5rat in that area. Bait has been really good at denying that information away. Trying to chase Stominin though. They are trying to chase Stominin, but in the meantime, Speed is pushing out that bot lane. They've got to address that. He's going off the tier 3 towers now. Stonebank, he'll be there. Take care of that Helm of the Overlord creep. Roshan will go the way of bait, of course. Aegis is now on Stonebank. And happy days for bait. They're back in the driver's seat. Yeah, they've, they've played this game really well. Like They have corrected the issues they've had earlier. The early aggression just leads to this point where they've managed to really keep the NM down by a good margin once more. Again, something that we haven't seen teams really do, punish DNM. And it's just leading to a much bigger success. Stonebanks had a really good game. Dendi's been on fire, showing us why he still plays mid, of course. The legend still has it. I mean, his yeah. jumps have been huge. And the uptime and pulverize is kind of sickening. 24 second cooldown. You can always just jump in and look for more. Shadows take us. Shadow will get bait. Kids. No, avoid the gank for now. Instead, Albino Zebra. He always has to tank the gank, this man. Though I say that, they are going to force the fight anyway. Albino somehow survives, and now the roar out. Dendi may get caught down. Abyssal Blade is there. Stonebank, you'll hold DNM for a moment. Another bash onto the Sven. The wall slowing him. The vacuum back away. But DNM is still running, somehow surviving another time. And Dendi and Lodine are the ones to drop. How? Four staff glimmer capes. They they coordinate really well on saving DNM there. And while that happens, Kits is just ripping through the back line, jumping around with the Ags, with a basher, getting some good damage off, and cleans up. A bit of a scattered fight, a bit of a messy fight works in favor of five rat four staff to stall this game out. Not quite the end of the world. You know, Stonebank still has Aegis, respawns coming up in less than a minute. Not much that five rat can really do with that space. So for them, it's just constant stall. Keep trying to find that open, keep working onto these items. Uh, try to finish up that full blood torn for DNM. Going to be massive against the Ursa. Help them to kind of just focus in, get a good burst damage off onto him. I think the key thing is still trying to isolate Dendi. If you can isolate Dendi, remove that pulverize, remove this massive, huge damage dealing target from the side of bait then the follow-up fight doesn't feel as worrying for 5-Rat 4 staff. There's still a lot of good AoE control coming out with Funic and with Moose, and of course the output of Stonebank is huge. But Dendi is the big factor, because when he jumps in, when he finds the right target, your, your, your team fight's ruined on 5-Rat 4 staff's end. Yeah, he's been fantastic throughout this whole game, and like you mentioned, he gets the right target, you're in big, big trouble. But 5-Rat, I mean, they've been doing a great job of just keeping this game going. I mean, look at their tier 3 top. 3T2 HP hasn't died yet. For that, that's been at least, what, 5-10 minutes now. Their experts are just keeping the lanes pushed out, John. It's partially how you just win a game. Stominant, gonna get caught out. And it's really that simple. If you can't address this constant split pushing from speed, you're never really gonna be able to go high crap. Nah. Speed's just been doing a, a great job of just always forcing them back. He really has. And... For, for Bait's part, I know it, it's so hard to say because it does feel like they still have that power in them. They've got a minute 30 for that Aegis to expire in Stonebank. They've got the Swift Blink almost done in terms of gold for him as well. 
And the tier 3 top does finally fall, at the least. So they've got a safe racks to just kind of shove into. They've got all their spells back up in base. They, they do have an opportunity here. But, I don't know, it, it feels like if 5 Rat just finds these angles as well, it can get really back and forth. Full Lincoln's up on kits for stun protection. Just ensuring that he's not hit by the Abyssal or Pulverize if he, he, he does get targeted down. Allowing him to just slip away once more. Gonna be huge. DNM, full blood torn up and does have buyback. So he's not at risk with his item buyout. And more damage. A little bit more to feed into on the Ursa if they really want to focus him down. Probably Dendi, actually. Just get him controlled up. Oh, bot lane. Look at the T1 tower. Not going for a T2 yet. Bait, hoping the Fire Rat come out of the base and find themselves a pick off, but nobody's showing up. And it's all about the split push. Kids this time dealing with the top lane. They've still got so many out of towers, though. It's not going to be that easy to pressure them to, to come back through that top lane. You'd always rather go through bot if you can. Aegis has expired, though. So you don't have that secondary life anymore. Bait may second guess whether they can actually go high ground now. And that just means more time for five run. Yeah, more time to farm, more time to try building up. Bait does smoke out, but five rat have just been standing on high ground low. Five rat will smoke themselves as well. Smoke on smoke situation. Is he God strength DNM? He knows he wants oh. Stonebank so bad. They've got the Ursa. When Rage was there just in the nick of time, Stonebank, he's got the BKB. He's going to go for the man fight. DNM will back his way out. Funnick trying desperately to find this Sven. They've got him with the arrow. DNM still on the run. A man on the run. He's going to have to fight back surely. Still running away, but eventually does get caught by the Avalanche, and he is gone. Does have buyback. Problem is, he doesn't have God Strength for another minute. I, I don't know if you jumped that Ursa. He's just too durable. Stoneback, I and mean, he's got the Ags in Rage up. You're just not doing enough damage on him. That damage reduction is huge, especially up against a hero like the Sven. A five Rat feels like you need to take care of the backline. Maybe remove Funic, remove Dendi, allow the durations on Stoneback to just fade away, try to kite him around, and go from there. Well, that's your two bottom tower finally going down. That'll be the final out of tower for five Rat. 17k advantage now for bait. Refresh orb to come out on Dendi. They don't really want to have to buy back on this fin if they can avoid it, but they may have no choice in the matter. Albino Zebra in the meantime getting hit by an arrow. In goes Kids trying to delay any kind of attack, but he's got stuck in the tree line. He'll still get out. Just using that rolling thunder. That's so much damage, Dendi! Oh boy. oh boy, Dendi needs to get the hell out! No, And now they've got the Ursa! What? What? Moose also gets caught. Huh? This is without the spin. Yeah, they. <laughs> it, it's a good macro fire uh, angle. They manage to drag it all the way back. They force this really awkward position out from bait. I. Uh, oh, uh, show me the replay. I gotta see a replay. Yeah, I gotta see this as well. That that's just sickening. So much damage coming out there and. They just managed to isolate so well. Like, I, I think that was just such great positioning out from Kits to bounce around there, push the backline further away, and ensure he could focus in on Denny. He just what? really kept an eye on Denny. They got the stuns off to control the Here we go. as well. Let's have a look at this. What happened to Stonebank? He, he popped the Enrage a bit early. and That, that was the uh, that was the, uh, the Earthshock Enrage, so not a big deal. Kits is with, the, with the Rolling Thunder is the main problem. You see Denny oh, gets stupidly low. Now another bushwhack out, and that's a lot of damage flying in. He just got perma stun basically. Yeah, it felt like every swash gave a bash, at least one instance of a bash. So they managed to just constantly focus in on him while also isolating Dendi away. And again, that's probably what they need to do. Just keep doing that. They, they've done it once. Every time they've jumped the Ursa first, it doesn't pan out. But when you take away Dendi, when you ensure Phonic doesn't have a good angle to come into, you can isolate and kite the Ursa, which is what you mostly do against Ursa anyway. You want to kite the guy, you want Enrage to go away, and then you come back in when he's softer, and he can still melt. And again, without DNM, 
you have enough damage with DNM once in range is gone, God Strength will rip right through. Scan out into the Roshan pit. Bait may assume Roshan's happening, but it's still 30 seconds away from respawning. There's your smoke up. Bait will rush towards that pit. Five Rat Four Staff hanging around the area. Could be a little bit awkward hanging around there. They'll back out. Roshan just so important throughout this game. Don't know what number Roshan we're up to. I think it's four. Mm -hmm. Should be about that. So we did get the refresh shard in the last one. This should have a full complement now. And it does. So important for both sides, right? Like, you're at the deadlock on 5 Rat 4 Staff. You haven't made too much progress on the enemy objectives. Not really touching the high ground. But the same thing goes for bait. They take out this top tier tree with just a creep wave. They try to make progress in the bot tier tree, which was maybe one of the small things they in their decision making that kind of fired back. If they went for the top instead without the pressure from the tower, it might have been easier to siege. It would have definitely been easier to siege. You might not have found yourself oh. in that awkward situation. Now a smoke out here from Fly Rat. And a nullifier on DNM. Mind you, again, he doesn't have buyback so gold. So risky. It's very risky. No buyback gold available on the Sven. Mind you, they defended last time without him. So, <laughs> oh, here we go. Okay, okay. Gaben's blessing. Here we go. Right before Roshan, there's always a double damage. Guaranteed. Every single time. And on a Sven, this is going to be a bit of a problem for bait. This is going to get crazy if they find the angle in. Five Rat, they are praying someone shows up right now. Moves, don't do it. Smoke is there. They know the Tiny's on the other side. Kids just has to move in with the Rolling Thunder. You don't want to get DNM caught right now, but if he can just hit a couple times, there's going to be a team wipe. Stonebank, not the Ursa. He's going to back out. He got the enrage just in time. He's okay for now. They should have seen the double damage. They don't want anything to do with Five Rat right now. They'll run. It's going to wear off anyway. So no more double damage available. In goes Stomach once again. He wants DNM real bad. The roar is there, but the pulverize. Dendi just in the nick of time. DNM still trying to run with the BKB, but the trample. No it's going to go right through. No buyback available for DNM. Surely Bait have done it. Surely Bait can push this game two to a game three. They've got the opportunity to do so. They could go for Roche if they want to be safe. It, it's it's that thing again. They go back to trying to jump Stone Bank first. The Ursa with the Enrage is just not a target. Even with the DD, you have to find that backline. You have to find Dendi. You have to find Funic. Even Moose is a pretty damn good target to go for. Rosh number four goes their way. Aegis, free Axe, free Refresh, and Cheese. And you just have so much more to play with now. Like Ags up on Dendi. He's got the uproar now, along with the little breaky lines that we saw in Ag's, Ag's Labyrinth, of course. Yeah. It gets a lot tougher. You do, mind you, you have some time on respawn. Half a minute's not the worst thing in the world. You do have the buyback here. Look at the boost, though. Being sneaky with that, with that ninja gear smoke. He is. Oh, oh nice toss back. He's got kids. That was the main problem last time around. And they've taken him down. He does have buyback available. But without the buyback of DNM, there's just no point. They've got to wait the 15 seconds out. So Bait, they'll go for a secondary Rax now. No way of defending this one so far for 5 Rat. Be two Raxes down. We'll see if Bait want to go for the third. And they will. Stonebank, he'll rush towards it. DNM is back up now. And again, Kits can buy back for this final team fight if it is going to be the final one. Stonebank still working towards that tier 3 tower. We'll find it. Does blink forward. Stonebank, very aggressive blink. DNM going to move in with a stun. Albino Zebra is there, but does get caught out. Four Staff Way is there. Ice Path out as well. The Ursa is dropping slightly low, and now with the Rolling Thunder, they might be able to lock him down, but he'll go for the Earth Shock out. Still being stunned Whoa. up. There's your Sharpshooter. The Ursa still dropping. Eventually might go down with this Aegis, but somehow still alive. Eventually finally does die. Albino somehow alive throughout all this, and they have to back, or do they? They found DNM. In the backside, DNM's bashed what? up. He still no. He still does not have buyback. 
Oh boy. And that's why you saved buyback gold. That definitely is. He took a risk buying out that nullifier earlier on. Doesn't quite pay off. And without the macro pyre yet to stall, they're gonna have to deal with mega creeps. Their lineup can, but it's just such a difficult they're game. They're still trying. Moo's getting caught for the ice path, but Funix in. He's got a decent vacuum out. Dendi will pop the break as well. They just shouldn't have the damage to take down the Ursa. But I've said that before. He's been caught again here, Stone Bank. So with the enrage, he will be able to back off. DNM, he's just 200 gold away from buyback. Someone's got to get out and buy some bounty runes, or rather get the bounty runes. Tier 4 towers. Under siege. How much time can they buy? It doesn't feel like can, they can buy enough. They have the macro pyre out on Albino Zebra if they just find the chain stuns. Moves in, toss back onto Kids. That's oh, the boy. Pango down, surely. No buyback available after this one. Kids trying to run, but eventually should get taken down. Though he's still somehow going for Dendi. We'll pop the pulverize, take down the Pango. They are still trying to buy a bit more time for the spend, but it seems to be all too late as the Ancient is under attack. Five more seconds for DNM. Five more, he's going to be up. But the Ancient completely exposed and completely going down. In they go. Final team fight. But when are they going? The Ancient is still dying. Who are they going to aim? Denny's focusing on the Ancient. He does not care about the team fight whatsoever. And eventually it is just over. It is just over. It was a close one, this one, John. But Bait proving to be the better team in the end. Yeah, they managed to 